So, we will do a quantum Hall effect in graphene and uh, this will be a derivation of the Landau levels and um, after that uh, we will just uh, talk about the conductivity without explicitly calculating them, but then you know that uh, conductivity can be calculated using uh, Kubo formula. There is one small thing that is important in this context is that uh, see the plateaus come when uh, you know there is a flux that is uh, threaded through the system and that flux has to match with the flux quantum and the flux quantum has a value which we have denoted several times by this, this is has a value some uh, 2 into 10 to the power minus 15 Weber. So, this flux uh, one has to match for an external field to thread through the graphene uh, or the honeycomb lattice. Now, this honeycomb lattice has a uh, uh, this sides or the lattice constant is like 2.46 angstrom and uh, if one does a back of the envelope calculation the area of this uh, unit cell uh, which is just a honeycomb structure is like root over 3 by 2 a square and this comes out to be something like 0 0.05 uh, nanometer square 0 0.051 nanometer square. So, if I have to multiply a magnetic field with this area in order to find the flux, then uh, that uh, magnetic field has to be a uh, few kilo teslas or even more and uh, that is a very large magnetic field. Uh, so, uh, that is why graphene if you have to see quantum Hall effect in graphene, uh, the magnetic field has to be very large, larger than what we have seen for the the 2D electron gas or the gallium arsenide structures that we have talked about earlier. All right, uh, we will ignore this part for the moment uh, and uh, pretend that everything is similar to the quantum Hall effect in a 2D electron gas that is the uh, momentum, uh, the mechanical momentum gets uh, you know renormalized by this uh, vector potential and uh, it, it happens here as well excepting that we now have a lattice structure and uh, not only the lattice structure there is uh, two atoms per basis. So, uh, it is a matrix uh, equation that we have to solve and uh, we will go ahead and solve uh, that matrix equation and find the energy uh, corresponding to the Schrodinger equation which we will call as a Landau levels. Uh, just to remind you that the Landau levels for a 2D electron gas uh, has a form which was n plus half h cross omega where omega uh, is E b over m and that is the uh, cyclotron frequency which depends on the magnetic field. Uh, we will see here how Landau levels that depend on uh, both n uh, the quantum number relevant quantum number and uh, b the magnetic field all right. So, we will use a gauge uh, similar to earlier. So, we will use a Landau gauge. Uh, that means your A equal to minus B Y X cap. Uh, we could take the other Landau gauge as well that is uh, B X Y cap that it will give rise to same result. And just to remind you that the Hamiltonian uh, in this particular case is of the form it is a V F and a sigma dot uh, P. Uh, I have absorbed the H cross here uh, or we could write it as H cross V F into sigma dot K. Uh, where uh, p is the momentum or k is the wave vector and um, this Hamiltonian in presence of a field uh, transforms into uh, it becomes uh, h cross uh, v f sigma dot uh, p minus e a. This is the standard prescription which uh, we call as uh, piles coupling and this is how the momentum transforms and so on. So, we will write down the explicitly this equation and uh, right now we are doing it uh, for a given k that is a Dirac point, but however, uh, we will generalize it to two Dirac points uh, right uh, like writing the Hamiltonian in a unified manner for both the Dirac points, but that we will do later. Uh, let us uh, carry on with this calculation for the moment. So, uh, the matrix equation becomes equal to V f uh, into we will write down the. So, this is your sigma x and p x minus e uh, a x uh, because this is uh, 
So, we have taken it as a x equal to minus b y and uh, plus. So, this is your sigma and then uh, we have a sigma y i 0 uh, and a p y. There is no change in p y because the gauge is uh, purely in the x direction. The two component um, wave function psi a and psi b. So, this is equal to psi a and psi b. Okay. So, uh, remember that sigma does not denote the spin degrees of freedom, it denotes the sublattice degrees of freedom which are nothing but the a and b sublattices. So, this 2 by 2 structure is purely because of the sublattice structure which we call as pseudo spinner uh, and it does not have uh, anything to do with the actual spin or the real spin of the electrons. Okay. So, let us call this as equation 1. Let us write down uh, the two equations because this is a 2 by 2 equation we can explicitly write them opening up uh, in terms of psi a and psi b. So, this is V f and P x minus I P y plus E b y and this is psi a psi b uh, this is equal to E psi a. So, uh, the psi b is related to psi a and vice versa. So, V f uh, is equal to P x plus I P y plus E b y well, we can write only one bracket here. So, this is equal to psi a equal to e psi p. Okay. So, this is equation number 2. Let us call them as uh, you know 2a and 2b maybe. So, this is 2a and this is 2b. Okay. These two equations just we get it from the from equation 1 and uh, if you eliminate one of them in favor of the other say we eliminate uh, uh, psi a and solve for psi b then what one gets is that. So, basically from 2b or 2a you calculate psi a and put it back into 2b that is exactly what uh, is done. So, this is equal to p x minus i p y this is just algebra that I am doing here. So, it is a e b y and p x plus i p y uh, plus e b y and uh, psi a this is equal to e square psi a. So, this is just psi b is being eliminated or uh, we could have done the other way around. So, here of course, we do the we uh, put 2 b into 2 a not 2 a into 2 b. So, uh, let us write it that eliminating psi b. Okay. And you keep simplifying it. Uh, so, this becomes equal to p x square plus uh, E b y square plus i p x plus uh, there is a commutator there. So, E b y uh, and which is a commutator with a p y this is just uh, from the two signs that we get here and then a p uh, y square and uh, this is a commutator bracket. So, let me change this bracket to another one. So, put a big first bracket here and uh, psi a this is equal to e square by v f square uh, psi a just to remind you v f is the Fermi velocity of electrons in graphene. Uh, and then simplifying further so it will be p x square plus e b y square minus e h cross b e h cross b plus p y square we simply use the commutation relations p x of course commutes with p y, but uh, p y does not commute with y uh, and y p y we use as i h cross. So, uh, once we do that, uh, so we get uh, so this is uh, psi a is equal to e square by v f square uh, psi a let us call this as equation 3. So, this is the equation which gives you psi a or rather the, the Schrodinger equation for psi a. So, one has to remember that you know p x does not commute with x or uh, and so on. So, the wave function for this or the solution of this would be uh, like a psi a would be some uh, 
you know f of y which is some function of y. <coughs> so, this is a free particle motion in the x direction because there is no x in this inside the Hamiltonian term that is this term here there is no x, but there is a y. Uh, so, it is a free particle in the x direction and uh, like a harmonic oscillator in the y direction ok, uh, y because p y would not commute with y. So, this is simply equal to the wave function uh, is i k x x. Of course, there is a, a complicated normalization uh, constant which we are not writing, but there it is there ok. So, if we substitute, so this is uh, the solution. I hope you understand where the solution comes from. Uh, this was discussed uh, in details when we did the uh, 2D electron gas problem, uh, the same problem in 2D electron gas and then uh, so this is some function of y which we do not know and then there is a propagating part or a, a plane wave part which uh, is in the x direction ok. Uh, so, what we do is that we uh, substitute 4 into 3. And uh, what one gets is the following. Uh, so, one gets as uh, p x uh, plus e b y square again a uh, little bit of algebra, but uh, these are required in order to arrive at the final result. Uh, we have solved for the wave function or rather made an ansatz of the wave function unnormalized wave function, but we still are far from knowing the eigenvalue of the problem and both are required the Eigen function will tell you what the electronic wave functions are corresponding to the Landau levels and uh, the Landau level their dependence on the quantum number as well as uh, B have to be found out as well ok. So, it is E h cross uh, B plus a P y square. So, along with me you should uh, verify all these things if I have missed a factor or something you should correct it v f square and this is equal to f of y exponential i k x x. So, this is substituting that this replace p x as a minus i h cross del del x. Here there is one uh, small point that needs a mention that even though we are doing it on a lattice, uh, we are substituting this uh, momentum operator as minus i h cross del del x which is known of course, but uh, if you remember your uh, del del x or d d x is nothing but f of x uh, plus h say for example, uh, minus f of x divided by h uh, limit h tends to 0. Uh, this is the definition of the derivative the first derivative or you can also write it as uh, you know uh, limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x minus h uh, divided by 2 h um, that is also a central difference uh, formula or uh, the direct formula which is mostly used in uh, uh, mathematics both are acceptable. And uh, how we go from a continuum version to a lattice version is what I am uh, showing here. So, uh, if you uh, replace p x by minus i h cross del x, so it becomes equal to minus i h cross uh, del del x not del x plus e b y uh, square f of y exponential i k x x minus e b h cross f of y exponential i k x x minus uh, h cross square del 2 f y uh, del y 2 exponential i k x x and this is equal to e square by v f square f of y exponential i k x x. So, this is the Schrodinger equation and um, we can uh, operate uh, this del del x on these uh, function f of y exponential i k x and that will give me a k x term and so on. And similarly, you know the del 2 of course, f y del y 2 there is no uh, dependence. So, uh, this del y 2 will be acting only on the f of y. So, if you uh, do a bit of simplification then what 
comes is that h cross k x plus e b y square and of f of y exponential i k x x minus e h cross b f of y exponential i k x x minus h cross square del 2 f del y 2 this f is a function of y and exponential i k x x and this is equal to e square by v f square f of y exponential i k x x okay of course um, the exponential term etc that cancels out from both sides because they are not equal to 0. So, further simplifying. So, let me see the equation number. So, let us call this as equation number 5. So, if we simplify then this becomes equal to h cross square uh, and then a k x plus e b y uh, square minus e b uh, over h cross minus uh, del 2 del y 2 and uh, so this f of y equal to e square by v f square f of y ok. So, this is the uh, uh, same as uh, Schrodinger equation that we started with it is in a much uh, simplified form here. So, this will be like del 2 f of y uh, del y 2 plus e b over h cross square h cross k x divided by e b plus y square f of y uh, minus e b by h cross f of y uh, equal to h cross e square divided by h cross square v f square uh, f of y ok. Uh, so, this is uh, the farther simplified form and, and the finally we can also write it as uh, minus uh, just changing the sign there uh, del 2 plus e b by h cross square y minus y 0 square uh, f of y minus e b by h cross f of y equal to e square by h cross square v f square f of y ok, where y 0 is called as a guiding center we have seen this or the magnetic length so to say let us call this as equation 6 alright your y 0. So, let me write down y 0. So, y 0 equal to minus h cross k x over e b ok. So, this is that uh, y 0 and uh, using this we have del 2 f of y uh, del y 2 plus e square divided by h cross square v f square plus e b over h cross this is f of y minus e b over h cross square y tilde square I will tell you what y tilde is uh, and f of y equal to 0 where y tilde is equal to y minus y 0 ok which we have written. So, this is only for simplicity. So, we introduce this then finally in terms of this uh, this equation the above equation is written as del 2 f of y del y 2. So, we get a second order differential equation linear differential equation in y. So, this is uh, of course, uh, it is not a linear equation because there is a y square involved ok. So, second order differential equation right. So, uh, this is e b over h cross and uh, e square divided by h cross square v f square and uh, uh, h cross over e b. Uh, just bear with me for some time this is only algebra that I am doing in order to simplify things and so there is a plus 1 minus e b by h cross y tilde square uh, and f of y equal to 0. So, we get a, a differential equation f of y and uh, the solution will give us the Eigen functions that uh, we have made an answer about. So, let us take um, again introduce another variable. 
So, introduce say alpha square equal to E b over H cross such that uh, this is written as del 2 f of y del y 2 plus alpha square uh, e square by uh, h cross square v f square and um, h cross over e b plus 1 minus alpha square y tilde square and f of y equal to 0. Uh, so, inside the square bracket let us introduce another one um, another variable which is equal to beta equal to e square divided by h cross square uh, v f square and this is actually uh, divided by alpha square. So, this alpha square should go down which I for to write it there uh, and alpha square and uh, a plus um, 1 let us call that as beta. So, this this quantity is equal to beta. So, uh, we have a 1 over alpha square uh, del 2 f y del y 2 uh, and a plus a beta minus uh, alpha square y tilde square and f of y equal to 0. Okay. So, what equation number would this be 6? So, let us call it as 7. So, now we have to solve for f of y. Okay. If you introduce a new variable which is equal to say uh, q equal to eta y tilde uh, where eta is some scaling. Uh, then uh, we get this as um, del 2 f of y uh, del q 2 plus uh, beta minus beta minus q square f of y equal to 0. You have to now refer to this uh, to Bransden and Joshin uh, for the chapter on simple harmonic oscillator. There you had got the similar looking equation called as the Weber's equation and uh, from here the quantization uh, of uh, the energy levels come and this energy level quantization comes as um, beta equal to 2 n plus 1. So, uh, C uh, Branston and Joachim Uh, so, what is done is that in order to solve this uh, Weber's equation, you have to assume a power CD solution and when you put a power CD solution inside at all values of y that is at small y and large y, uh, you want to have a solution which is a polynomial times a Gaussian type of function, it is exponential minus say y square by 2 and things like that, but uh, that is not possible until uh, or unless you assume that uh, there is a the polynomial would get truncated it is not an infinite series because an infinite polynomial series would uh, become an exponential again and when it becomes an exponential again it sort of defeats the purpose because the exponential along with the uh, the Gaussian actually makes it a diverging exponential function which is not allowed, but this is the only uh, solution to the problem where you actually truncate uh, the polynomial up till uh, a given uh, number of terms so that it does not uh, blow up and become a or rather it does not become an exponential function and uh, this is uh, given in Branston and Joachim and see the chapter on simple harmonic oscillator. So, beta becomes equal to 2 n plus 1 that tells you that your e square divided by h cross square uh, v f square eta square becomes equal to plus 1 becomes equal to 2 n plus 1. So, the eigenvalue so 1 will get cancelled from both sides uh, this one will come here. So, this e becomes equal to e plus minus becomes equal to plus minus h cross v f or um, omega b which is e b over m and a root over n that is the structure of the Landau level.
okay. And the unnormalized wave functions we have already talked about, but let me uh, do a little bit more on that. So, instead of the equidistant Landau levels that we have obtained for the uh, 2D electron gas uh, that is n plus half h cross omega where n equal to uh, you know 0, 1, 2 etcetera. Here the Landau levels do not depend on the index n in a linear fashion rather it depends on it in a quadratic fashion ok. Uh, so, omega b is actually uh, root over 2 e b over h cross ok. We can actually write it as uh, let me not write it as omega b of course, it depends on uh, b, but uh, omega b actually has been used for the cyclotron frequency. So, we will write it as omega tilde ok which is this all right. So, uh, now what is the structure of the wave function? The wave function is f of q which is equal to some a n exponential minus q square by 2 and then there is a Hermite polynomial in q and Hermite polynomial has a property that when uh, n is even it only comprises of even powers of q that is q to the power 0, q square, q 4, q 6 etcetera and when is n is odd it is an odd function of q that is it uh, contains uh, odd powers of q like q, 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 uh, q to the power 5 and so on. So, as you change q to minus q uh, this odd term changes sign while the even term remains uh, same. So, uh, one can find actually the normalization uh, by using this uh, the total uh, wave function to be. Uh, so, this is like a minus infinity to plus infinity uh, psi square uh, equal to dy equal to 1 um, and this uh, will give you uh, there is a little lengthy calculation, but uh, it, it is done several places. So, this is equal to uh, eta divided by uh, 2 n n factorial root over pi whole to the power half ok. So, that is the normalized wave function because it depends on uh, this n ok. Uh, so, this is and then you can put it and then get these are the Landau levels and so on and the Landau level wave function let me write it uh, the full wave function this is only the uh, y part or the q part because q and y are related which we have said. This is equal to so psi uh, n x y um, this is given by uh, some uh, e b over h cross whole to the power 1 fourth um, 1 by 2 to the power n uh, n factorial. Uh, this to the power half and then we of course, have this exponential functions which is freely moving in the x direction and uh, then we have these uh, exponential e b over h cross uh, y minus y 0 square and uh, then the Hermite polynomials which is um, nothing but root over e b by h cross and uh, y minus y 0. So, in this gauge uh, the wave function is um, the particle actually propagates like a free particle in the x direction whereas, it executes a simple harmonic motion in the uh, y direction about some y 0 which is given by uh, the expression that we have talked about earlier. So, this energy of course, uh, does not depend upon uh, the quantum number corresponding to k x. Uh, and that is why it is uh, degenerate. So, any quantum number k x. So, k x is also like quantized like 2 pi over uh, l x into n uh, where n is the corresponding quantum number let us call it as m. So, this is true for any value of m and that is why it is uh, degenerate and practically the degeneracy could be you know infinitely large ok. So, this is the, the main answer is or rather the uh, inference of this problem is here where we have found the Landau levels to have uh, this particular form ok. Let me show the structure of the Landau levels here. So, this is the structure of the Landau levels this is um, because it is a square root dependence. Now, you see that instead of uh, the Landau levels depending rather they are equidistant they are this case in graphene they are not equidistant they in fact are as you go larger and larger n values 
you get a lower and lower differences between the Landau levels. And not only that, there are these all the values above n equal to 0 and all the values below n equal to 0 are equally uh, probable that is they can take positive and negative values which was unlike the case of a 2D electron gas. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, the structure of the Landau levels they are not equidistant the maximum is here. Okay. So, this is the maximum distance between the Landau level and because of these n equal to 0 and n equal to 1 Landau levels or n equal to minus 1. Here both positive and negative integers are allowed. Uh, so, the maximum uh, difference comes here and these uh, sort of differences are so large that there is a one can see actually uh, Landau levels in at room temperature or even larger than that. Okay. Let me show you how the uh, Landau levels uh, depend on B. Uh, if you see this expression that I have shown you here, there is a omega tilde which depends upon uh, root over B. So, this actually depends on these Landau levels actually depend upon uh, like root over N and B something like that. Okay. So, A it is square root of B as well as square root of N. I am leaving out other uh, factors at the moment, but it is like root over N and B and uh, which is what you see here, uh, you see that E as a function of B uh, has this structure, uh, there is a central n equal to 0 level and uh, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 above uh, n equal to 0 uh, that is 0 energy and these are the values below 0 n equal to 0. And uh, this is B in Tesla as I said earlier that you need much larger values of the magnetic field in order to uh, see quantum Hall effect in graphene. So, it is swept till about 400 Tesla. Okay. So, once we have uh, gotten the Landau levels and the wave functions etcetera, one can easily use uh, the Kubo formula that we have uh, talked about that we have described how to calculate conductivity. Uh, so, using that one can calculate the conductivity and uh, finding the conductivity one would know that how does the conductivity depend upon this n. Okay. It was uh, sigma x y equal to n e square over h for a 2D gas whereas, this uh, may not be equal to n e square by h and um, this difference in the behavior of both the Landau levels between the 2D electron gas and graphene arises from the fact that we are talking about uh, chiral uh, massless fermions, uh, relativistic uh, fermions in this case, which are of course, as we said several times earlier that uh, they are not really relativistic. The uh, scale is set by the velocity scale is set by the Fermi energy instead of the speed of light, uh, but still the dispersion is linear. So, this linear dispersion along with the massless behavior of the chiral fermions uh, what do I mean by chiral fermions is that if the fermion uh, sort of goes around one of the Dirac points uh, in a clockwise direction, it will go uh, anti-clockwise in the other Dirac point um, about the other Dirac point at e equal to 0. Okay. So, before we uh, go to uh, talk about the, the quantum Hall plateaus or how the quantization looks like, it is probably instructive and I will uh, go through it quickly. However, I uh, sort of suggest that you should look at these derivation quite carefully uh, and maybe uh, sort of get used to it. These are matrix equations uh, that we are solving and uh, then we are of course, uh, converting them into a set of equations and this uh, set of equations are being solved uh, you know uh, self consistently. Um, now, what I will do is that this is the situation at one k point and uh, you need to actually talk about the two k points, the two Dirac points or the two valleys together in order to you know do this to understand in a more detailed fashion the structure of the Landau levels and uh, the wave functions contributing to, to the n equal to 0 uh, Landau level. See here uh, very importantly because the uh, difference between the n equal to 0 and n equal to 1 is very large as I have shown. The mostly the n equal to 0 uh, Landau level is uh, mostly talked about or even uh, in experiments one sees the, the lowest Landau level. So, I extend this um, 
and in a sketchy manner uh, talk about uh, both the k and k uh, prime points. So, we do an analysis with both k and k prime points together unified description. Then we will write down the Hamiltonian for both k and k prime as um, so this is like a v f now it will not be a 2 by 2, but it will be a 4 by 4 2 coming from the sublattice degrees of freedom that is a and b and multiplied by another 2 coming from the 2 valleys. In addition if you really want to talk about the spin degrees of freedom then you will have 2 more degrees of or rather this uh, size of the matrix uh, goes up by another factor of 2 which means it becomes 8 by 8. But that is not required as long as the spin orbit coupling uh, can be ignored and uh, in graphene fortunately or unfortunately the uh, spin orbit coupling is uh, quite weak. So, this is uh, a 0 and a p x plus i p y um, and a 0 0 this is a minus p x plus i p y 0 0 0 and uh, this is like a 0 0 0 uh, p x minus i p y and a 0 0 p x plus i p y uh, 0 and so on. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, wave function or rather this is the Hamiltonian that one has to solve and uh, by solving again one gets this uh, Landau levels which you have already got. So, we have done it for only one k point. Now, I want to demonstrate as I said that I will not do a very detailed calculation like the one that I have done earlier. I will only sketch the uh, salient you know steps so that you can fill it in. Uh, so, we have this psi which will be let us write it as a component uh, like a, a psi a k prime, a psi uh, b k prime and a psi a k and a psi b k. Okay. So, that is the 4 by 4 structure uh, one uh, because of this um, k that is a, the valley degree of freedom and the other would be the sublattice degrees of freedom. So, if we uh, write down this, so this E into psi uh, A k is equal to V f uh, p x minus i p y uh, psi b k and E psi p uh, k is equal to V f uh, p x plus i p y and a psi A k and so on so forth. Okay. So, everything that uh, you know we have done, so we again substitute solving these equations. So, E square uh, just uh, exactly similarly that we have done earlier, it is k it is equal to h cross square v f square uh, p x minus i p y p x plus i p y and a psi a k. Now, remember these p x and p y they include the uh, these vector potentials which we uh, have not written here, but they would eventually include uh, this. So, just simplifying it. So, E square uh, psi b k is equal to h cross square uh, v f square um, p x plus i p y p x um, minus i p y and a psi b k. So, now we get two equations and these two equations can be solved and um, you have uh, while you solve there will be. So, what we do is that we change p x to uh, p x plus e b y. I am just using a different gauge same as Landau gauge, but here we are uh, changing the p x to p x plus e b y. So, again of course, in the last the thing also we have taken the gauge in the x direction. So, that is the Landau gauge and then once you do that and do some bit of simplification what one gets is uh, is the following it is h cross square v f square uh, psi b k equal to p x plus e b y um, 
square plus E H cross B plus P Y square and this is equal to psi B uh, K and so on. Okay. These K and K uh, are the Dirac points. I should write it with a vector, um, but I forgot writing it here. So, please put a vector everywhere. Okay. So, we arrive at again this uh, E square by H cross square V F square minus E H cross B psi B k equal to p x square say let us call it as tilde plus p y square tilde plus uh, psi b this is psi b and k and so on. So, where your uh, p x uh, tilde tilde square equal to p x plus e b y square and so on and of course, your p y tilde just to have a symmetry we have written it as p y tilde uh, both as with tilde, but uh, this is what. Uh, so, I am doing exactly the same calculation now uh, combining both of them uh, both the uh, k and the k prime points. So, it is e square by h cross square v f square uh, minus e h cross b uh, psi b k equal to p x square plus p y square by 2 m psi b k equal to half uh, let us call it uh, a k tilde y minus y 0 square plus p y square by 2 m psi b k and so on. Okay, as where your k tilde equal to nothing but e square b square by m uh, and y 0 equal to p x over e b okay, or h cross k x over e b. All right. So, uh, we are uh, doing a similar analysis and so on and then uh, here what we get is uh, a 1 over m uh, e square divided by h cross square v f square. Uh, equal to 2 n plus half uh, h cross a h cross omega b plus a h cross omega b which gives you a 2 n h cross omega b by uh, m. So, n is equal to 0, 1, 2 etcetera and uh, so on and then uh, of course, what we get is this is equal to sin of n uh, root over of n and that is why we wrote it earlier with uh, mod of n and this is equal to a v f and 2 h cross e b square root divided by m. Okay. So, this is the thing and you can write it as h cross omega tilde sin of n this is what we have written and a mod of n. Okay. Uh, so, this is uh, the Landau levels and and so on and then there are a few comments that uh, can be made here. So, basically the lowest Landau level is uh, of course, uh, n equal to 0 and uh, this uh, lowest Landau level is somewhat special and uh, because uh, it receives contribution from only one sub lattice uh, say the A sub lattice for the Dirac point at k and um, from the other sub lattice that is B sub lattice uh, at the other Dirac point that is k prime. Whereas, all the other Landau levels that is in, in not equal to 0 Landau levels uh, they receive contributions from uh, both the sub lattices uh, and that is why the n equal to 0 is actually special here. Whereas, in the 2D electron gas there is no nothing special about any of the uh, Landau levels. Okay. So, let me write the, the wave functions at the k and k prime points. So, it is uh, psi n k and k uh, this is at a k point. So, this is equal to some a n divided by some root over L um, exponential minus i k x. So, let us call it as a L x and now then you have a 0 0 
sin of n uh, minus i and uh, this is a sin n minus 1 k and uh, it is psi uh, n k. So, just from the one sub lattice here for, for the other one it is equal to k and k prime this is equal to some a n by root over l x exponential minus i k x x and again uh, you have a psi uh, n k s g n uh, n minus i a psi n minus 1 k uh, and a 0 0 that is the structure of that and uh, these uh, a n is equal to uh, 1 for n equal to 0 and this is equal to 1 by root 2 for uh, uh, n not equal to 0 ok. So, these are these uh, things and uh, just to make sure the definition of this. So, S g n of n equal to 0 for n equal to 0 and it is actually the sign. So, n by mod n for n not equal to 0 ok and each of these size uh, well we are using the same size. So, let me write it as a big psi here. So, the small size are uh, n k are these exponential uh, minus which are the Gaussians it is y minus y 0 square divided by L b square uh, and the h n y minus y 0 divided by L b that is the Hermite polynomial ok. So, these are uh, the Landau levels and their structures uh, for this uh, graphene. We have done an extensive study. We first done it for one k point, any of the k points rather. We have not distinguished the Hamiltonian. We have simply taken it as Vf sigma dot k, but there is a sign that you know at one k point with respect to the other. So, if you take that into account, uh, the k and k prime as well as the a and b becomes a 4 by 4 problem, slightly more complicated, but you can still solve it. And uh, now, we will not go and do a uh, calculation using the Kubo formula, but the, I will tell you the uh, results that come. So, it is integer uh, quantum Hall effect in graphing. Okay. So, uh, the integer quantum Hall effect is given by the sigma x y that is a Hall conductivity is 4 n plus half e square over h ok. That is the formula. So, this is called as a half integer quantum Hall effect. So, this can be written as nu e square over h ok, where nu has values which are uh, minus 10, uh, minus 6, minus 2, plus 2, 6, uh, 10, etcetera, ok. So, these are the quantization of the plateaus and these plateaus are quantized with these nu's. So, n is actually an integer and uh, these are uh, positive and negative for the electron and holes and these uh, factor of 4 that you see here at the front it takes into account uh, the degeneracy, the pseudo spin degeneracy which is A and B sub lattices as well as the uh, degeneracy corresponding to the two valleys that is uh, the two uh, Dirac points ok. So, your nu is equal to nothing but uh, plus minus 4 n plus half uh, and uh, even though we call it as an integer quantum Hall effect, it is actually a half integer quantum Hall effect and because of this half factor that is there. If you note that uh, your nu equal to minus 2 and nu equal to 2 ok. So, uh, minus 2 and 2. So, these two values they correspond to empty and uh, filled uh, levels with eigenvalue E n equal to 0 that is the lowest Landau level. So, E n equal to uh, 0. So, uh, these um, uh, for n equal to 0 Landau level the n equal to 0 Landau level. for n equal to 0 Landau level the valid degeneracy. 
So, valley degeneracy is called as a isospin at times and the sublattice is called as a pseudospin is same as same as the uh, sublattice degeneracy. And this is stated in a slightly different fashion when I say that the n equal to 0 Landau level actually receives contribution from only one sublattice and not from both. Okay. And so, this uh, Landau quantization for these non-relativistic dispersion that you have uh, learnt earlier, it produces equidistant Landau levels whereas, uh, here uh, for the relativistic case there are non-equidistant. Okay. And um, as opposed to the uh, usual degeneracies or rather these usual n values uh, which take usually positive numbers or including 0 for the harmonic oscillator which we have seen again from the 2 DEG. Here uh, they are entitled to take, so these take uh, you know uh, negative values as well. Okay. So, these uh, new values will dictate the values of uh, n. So, n actually corresponds to the Landau level index the same as the ones that we have derived and uh, nu is equal to plus minus this is the quantization of the plateaus. So, okay, this correspond to emptying and filling of the LL with n equal to 0, with n equal to 0 which means En equal to 0. Okay. So, this is 1 and this is 2. Okay. So, this is pretty much uh, the quantum Hall effect in graphene and it has been seen experimentally and uh, all these uh, integers were confirmed from the plateaus. Let me show you the uh, plot. So, this is the plot that uh, one gets for the quantum Hall effect. So, these red plots are the uh, Hall effect and the green plots are the magneto resistance plots or rather magneto conductance plots and uh, the plateaus are not at these line black lines, uh, but they are shifted by this half integer and seen at these blue lines okay? and uh, they are not only at 0 but they, these blue lines also go beyond or rather below 0 and these uh, are like the only Hall effect in, in the left this is the, the Hall effect uh, this red line is being shown and you can clearly see the plateau structure and the uh, scale is not set by e square by h as we have seen earlier it is set by 4 e square by h. Okay. And uh, so, this is the quantum Hall effect in graphene and if you want to see the a difference between non-relativistic, so this is non-relativistic 2 DEG and this is a relativistic that is graphene uh, in chiral massless fermions that is graphene where you see uh, the density of states is plotted as a function of uh, energy and you see that the density of state is uh, bunched here uh, and here. So, they are almost they are overlapping in this particular region whereas, there is a significant gap here uh, in this uh, energy. Okay. So, this uh, distinguishes the, the quantum Hall effect seen in uh, graphene and that in 2D electron gas. Mm -hmm.